What's going on, hustlers? Back at you guys with another video. Thank you guys so much for all the growth and the support on the channel. Remember, once we get to 5,000 subscribers, I am going to show you guys all my tips and tricks for submitting bids on dibs. And stay tuned, that 1K packaging video is coming. It's just as I mentioned in the last two videos, I just got to get these two check rides squared away, and then I'm going to head to the warehouse in Fort Lauderdale to get those done. Now, as you can tell by the title of the presentation, we're going to be discussing the 10 weirdest things that the government buys. Now, some of these things you can actually sell. Some of these things DLA actually buys, and I've talked about in previous videos. Some of these things are just outrageous, and I found while I was doing my research for the video. So um, we're going to get into the video. But first, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of the stuff, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram, and I will respond to you. You just have to be following me uh, to ensure that you get a response. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, sunscreen. Now, I've never sold sunscreen. However, all the stuff that we're going to talk about today is either going to be stuff that um, was published in an article that the government buys that I've either sold or I know somebody who's, who's sold. Now, this makes complete and total sense. And a lot of times people just have this misconception that the government just like kind of pulls this stuff out of thin air, right? And the government is just like this big entity that just spits stuff out. But I mean, like they, they're not a sunscreen manufacturer. And then it's like different people need different SPFs, right? And then certain people are going to be allergic to certain things um, and certain kinds of, you know, creams and stuff like that. So sunscreen makes total sense. And I know that DLA actually buys this stuff as well. So that is number one, sunscreen. Number two, Bibles. I actually have a client that sells Bibles and Qurans and prayer mats and rosaries and beads and all that good stuff. This also makes quite a bit of sense when you think about it, right? Um, a lot of people are religious. I know that they buy Torahs and Qurans as well. Um, I know that, you know, they, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure there's some law that requires that the government, you know, has to be accepting of whatever, you know, religion um, you are. And I do know Eid just passed. So um, I hope everybody had a good Ramadan for anybody who celebra celebrates it. I know that Eid just, just passed. And I do know that, th that DLA is very supportive of that because I worked with a client to sell Qurans. Um, and then she also sells Bibles as well. Makes complete sense. I know a lot of people in basic training, they lean very, very heavily into their faith. Uh, a lot of people as they go through, um, you know, special ops trainings, right? Anybody who's becoming an operator like Delta Force or an Army Ranger or Navy SEAL, they lean very, very heavily into their faith. And uh, I know that the government provides you with those things. And so Bibles are, they're not expensive to sell, but obviously there's very there's varied versions, right? Um, they're not expensive to sell, but I know there's a whole bunch of different versions. And then they have like the ones that my client was selling were like the little, little pocket Bibles that were very, very small. But I do know that there's some Bibles that definitely go for, you know, a hundred dollars plus. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, they take only about like 10 to $20 to make for those bigger ones. So margins are very, very good. However, I know that this is a super niche industry. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, nobody ever thinks of this. And based on what I heard from my client, um, uh, there are incumbents that sell this stuff, but because nobody ever thinks to sell this stuff, the government just kind of got stuck buying it from the same companies over and over. But the companies that do provide this stuff are kind of outdated. They're lazy. They've gotten complacent. So if you want to go pull the rug out from under somebody and go make some money selling Bibles, you can do that. Number three, bread knives. Shout out my homie, Nick. So he actually sold serrated bread knives. And I remember one day he just hit me up and he was like, bro, I'm going to sell bread knives. And I was like, what? What are you yapping about, bro? But it was straightforward. Literally found the stuff on, he literally found the exact speck of knives on the internet. And they came in a pack. And I remember that they were like, it wasn't, they weren't like laminated when they came, but it was like a long sheet, right? 
and there was like 10 knives per sheet. And then there was like this polyurethane, like plastic lamination on one side and then one on the other side. And they were almost like vacuum sealed and they were actually pretty sharp. Um, and they were super, super long. I just think I remember that. But they specifically had to be like serrated kind of bread knives. I don't know what base they ended up going to. We sent them to somewhere in San Antonio. Um, I don't know if there's like some kind of baking thing that was going on, but it was made very clear that these knives were to be explicitly used for bread and nothing else. So that's number three. Number four, paint brushes. So I already talked about this in my last video, the five easiest products to sell to the government. I know DLA buys this stuff. Sherwin Williams, all that good stuff, but our men and women who are boots on the ground, um, everybody who works at a VA, anybody who has, you know, um, a family that lives on base with them, their kids are doing arts and crafts, right? This stuff makes sense. You got to think outside of the box. The more ambiguous something is, the more random something is, the higher the probability you are going to, you are going to find success in selling it to the government because nobody else is thinking of it. Um, and yeah, paintbrushes, I was very pleasantly surprised when I saw that. I was like, hmm. But it makes sense because even if you're not using it for arts and crafts and you're just using it to paint a wall or something like that or to get, you know, um, like a very, very ornate design done in, you know, a government building and then something has to be very precise and meticulous, you're going to use a paintbrush. You're not going to use the whole ass roller. But the roller also falls underneath that category of paintbrushes. Number five. Socks and underwear. I got this from a client who I'm working with currently who is a veteran. And he was like, yeah, they would give us socks and underwear in basic and then it would rain. And then they would sometimes you would need to request other socks and underwear or sometimes they wouldn't have any. And then you would have to dry out the ones you weren't wearing over over a fire. Right. Um, but he was like, yeah, they were getting like Gildan and, and Hanes. <sighs> They were using like Gildan and Hanes socks and, and underwear, which also makes sense. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody sell that stuff. So that is number five. Now, the last five things that I have here, they are going to be very, very unique. Some of these things I can guarantee you no human being that I've ever spoken to in the industry has ever thought about selling. Number six, helium. Okay, so the U.S. has a helium uh, supply, right? And it initiated, it was initiated back in World War I for all the blimps and the warships, right? But because we don't really use them anymore, like we don't really use blimps. And I think there's only seven in the world. And I think one recently pops and now there's only six, right? Um, we still, we still keep stores of helium, but they're no longer used primarily for the blimps. One fun fact about helium, or two fun facts about helium, it actually serves as a very, very good cooling fluid. Like it's very, very good at keeping the temperature of internal systems uh, very low. And then the second fact is it is very, very hard to come by in its natural form in earth. So the prices of helium are going up. Anybody that, that trades options, uh, go look at some helium futures because uh, the price of helium is, is going up and it's very, very hard to process and refine and finding it in its original form uh, in earth as it naturally occurs is very hard to do. So that is number six. Now, this next one is actually going to shock you guys, but not for the reason that you think. Number seven, Barbie dolls. So I was actually super tweaked out when I saw this. I was like, okay. I, I wasn't tweaked out when I saw Barbie dolls. I was tweaked out when I found the reasoning behind why the government buys them. So if somebody has to guess what the target demographic is of the people that the government bought this for, you'd be like, oh, little girls between like the ages of, I don't know, three and 10, right? wrong they were adult women above the ages above the ages of 25 25 to 45 and they were purchased because the government wanted to do a study on facial recognition i'm not entirely sure of all the details um i really didn't want to look too much into it just because i was kind of creeped out by it but i guess they were having women in different age brackets look at different kinds of barbie dolls and then look at their faces and then Line, and then they line them up and then they have the women, you know, pick and match the Barbie dolls. That's what it says. That's, that's, that's as far as I know, that's not classified. I could, you could look more into it. I don't really want to look that much into it though. It kind of freaks me out, but, um, 
yeah, the government was buying it. They spend money on it. Uh, I'm sure that there is a niche for action figures and toys and stuff by DLA. Could be wrong, but if not DLA, <sighs> somebody buys it. Let's see. What's number? Oh, eight coffee mugs, coffee mugs, coffee mugs, coffee mugs. I don't know why I never thought to look this up myself. I don't know exactly what uh, FSC code this falls under, but this also makes complete sense. Um, and it's said that the biggest people that buy them were VA. So VA, you know, hospitals and institutions, all that stuff, veterans affairs. And then people overseas at like different bases and stuff. Those were like the largest consumers of coffee mugs, which I talked about how coffee makers are very common um, and easy to sell with DLA in my last video, five easiest products to sell to the government. So check that out. Check that video out. Um, but I never once thought about the coffee mugs themselves. And the cool thing that I like about this or the thing that this brought to my attention is for every single thing that the government buys, it's highly probable that there's another set of items that coincides with that item, right? Underwear has socks, bread knives has ovens, coffee machines has coffee makers, I sold landing gear struts. The landing gear struts go with the bearings, right? So if you get one, if you can figure out one thing to sell, just think of anything else that might accompany that set of items, and then you'll you might be on to a very unique niche. Now, these last two things, I guarantee you, you cannot guess. If you want to pause the video right here and then you want to, you know, say what you think it is, um, you can you can do that. But I guarantee you there's 0% chance you have ever thought that the government buys these things. Number nine is a hockey rink. So I did some research on this, right? And this is actually via a surplus auction. Now, the, things about, the thing about surplus auctions is sometimes it sees the material from a drug bust, right? And it'll tell you, or not a drug bust, but like tax evasion, any, any time the government takes something from somebody else, right? So then I started looking specifically at like Department of Defense auctions. And it's less likely that you're going to find something that sees there, right? So then it you can look and see, okay, like what's the history on the item, et cetera, et cetera. So the government bought all of the components to assemble a hockey rink. They, they built one, right? And then for whatever reason, they just decided they no longer wanted to use it. Now, it wasn't an ice hockey rink. It was like a roller skating hockey rink, just to clarify. But they bought all the components for it, built it up made it, and then we're like, okay, we no longer want this. We're going to sell it. So they didn't buy a hockey rink in its entirety. They bought all the components to make one. And then, you know, I think this is up for, like, the, the article that I found this on, um, or it was, like, really an auction listing, but also an article. It was published in 2023, and the hockey rink was made in 2009. So I guess they got, like, more than a decade, almost a decade and a half of use out of it. So, I mean, that's a pretty... That's a pretty valid uh, amount of time to be using a, a hockey rink. So that is number nine. And the other, the last item here is sports related as well. And when I thought about it, I was like, holy crap, that makes complete sense. So number 10, and I guarantee you, you can sell the components for this. You might even be able to sell these things in their entirety. Number 10 is scoreboards. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, what the hell does a scoreboard have to do with the government? But think about all the intramural like basketball and football and soccer tournaments, even the damn hockey tournaments, right? That, you know, these uh, like different platoons and, and stuff have. Now that not every single one is going to have a scoreboard. However, I do know um, I've seen like videos like on, on Snapchat of my buddies who have been in the Navy and they're in a gym, like a government gym, and there's literally a scoreboard like showing, um, you know, what the score is, right? And I was reading about this in particular, like this one was also up for auction. So this was bought as a whole, and the government was actually looking, like they were soliciting people to sell the components to refurbish the scoreboard, and nobody ever did it. So then the scoreboard was literally just taken out of service, and then they were like, okay, we'll just auction it off. Um, it works. Obviously, it's not like 100% ideal. It's not brand new. It needs to be refurbished. But huh, the government literally bought scoreboards. So those are the 10 weirdest things that the government 
purchases. So thank you guys so much for tuning in all the way to the end. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get to 5,000 subscribers. Today's video is a bit of a fun video. However, next week's video, I guarantee you I have two I have two bangers. I'm in actually interviewing a, somebody who has made it to a very, very high number in sales in DLA in their first year, who's a client of mine. And then coming up, I am doing a podcast with a major, major, major influencer in the GovCon space. So you're going to want to subscribe because you don't want to miss that. And then in exactly 30 days from today, I will be going to Thailand to go do a, another podcast with another very prominent influencer in the space. So like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get to 5K. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. My cowboy hat is saluting all you hustlers. And not only are we wishing your success, but we are sure of it. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. If you got any questions, remember you must be following me um, if you want a response. And if you are looking for some coaching, some guidance, um, if you're looking for somebody to point you in the right direction, if you're looking to join a community, if you're looking to join a team of people um, that can guide you in the right direction with DLA, click the link below. Uh, you're going to see that in the description and you're going to have the opportunity to book a call with me on my calendar and find out if you are a good fit to join NAMYAD's coaching program to work with DLA. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will catch up with you guys in 48 hours from now when the next video drops. Have a good one.